I don't think this is a surprise to anybody, but I am obsessed with the CRT. Everything from the good ones to the bad and ugly ones, and from the larger CRTs all the way down to the smallest CRTs. So when I found out about this particular model, I knew I had to get my hands on one so I could review it and show it to you. So let me introduce to you the Panasonic CT101 Travel Vision Television. This is the smallest and lightest color TV that was ever manufactured. All right, now before we get into this, Here's a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Adobe and their new article, Fast Forward, comparing a 1980s supercomputer to the modern smartphone. The article dives deep into just how powerful the modern smartphone actually is in comparison to the technologies of the past. The article goes back to the Apollo 11 guidance computer and compares it to the Cray 2 supercomputer that was developed in 1985. And then we jump up and see how that compares to a modern Apple iPhone smartphone. Adobe presents a wonderful illustration of how much larger in footprint size the Cray 2 computer is compared to an iPhone. And it also dives deep into how much more powerful the newer age smartphones would have been to these 1985 supercomputers. You'll also learn some of the history on Adobe, including their founding in 1982, and then their inventing of the PDF in 1991. All right, so if you would, please check out the article that's linked in the description of the video, and I have it pinned in a comment in the comment section. Go check out the article. And now let's get back into the CT101, the 1.5 inch color CRT television. Some awesome hardware here we're gonna be looking at in a second, but before we dive into looking at the actual television set, I just wanted to admire and check out this amazing box because it's in fantastic condition. We've got just the actual set covering up some kind of a stadium down there. It looks like a track field right here. Panasonic's logo right here. And then of course our model number and information right there. First off, this edge along here, we can see that this is manufactured by Matsushita Electric Industrial Company from Osaka, Japan. Over here we have some marketing where we have a scene with some tennis players and then a band from like an orchestra. Here and this one actually has a extension on the screen. It's this detachable hood screen with a magnifier of 1.3 times. So you could add that onto the screen and actually make the image look a bit bigger. We've got a car adapter cord here, a rechargeable battery pack, got our hood for uh, magnification on the image. We have an AC adapter, the headphones, and an antenna attachment unit. This unit actually does have an adaptable cable here where we can plug in audio and video from a composite video source. On this edge, we just have the simple color television again, Panasonic markings. And then there's some other Panasonic devices from the 80s behind there that would have been sold with looks like some kind of a VHS player and um, channel tuner. And then this is the to-go setup where you could be camping and uh, take this little television with you, plug it into your cigarette lighter. And so that's a really cool box. I'm just blown away that this is still all in one piece. The only thing different is we do have this uh, serial number. So wow, even that little uh, additional sticker tag is still intact and on this box. All right, let's go ahead now and open this box up and see what we have on the inside here. And to open this box, we're gonna take uh, a little bit extra time and care just because I don't wanna damage this at all. Oh my goodness, look at this. We even have our, our operating instructions manual here. Read these instructions completely before operating the set. So we'll check this out. Let's see what it says down here. Picture tube, 1.5 inch, 30 degree deflection. Wow, so much great information right here with the set with some nice, amazing pictures on it. Just really cool stuff. And then yes, here we have it. Here's our AC adapter. This is that lens. Check it out. This is that lens that gives you that little bit of a magnification. So that's here, and that looks like it's in great shape. Look at the little Panasonic marker down there on the bottom bezel of that. How cool is this little thing? I just love that stuff. Wow, that is so awesome. Uh, here's our cabling. 
that can help us adapt into composite. Actually, it looks like they've got a composite uh, additional adapter here. Some headphones. Oh, look at those headphones. These are the original headphones that came with it. Check out, oh my goodness, how crusty that deteriorated uh, ear softening thing was. Oh man, how disgusting. Remember those old foam things they would put on these earbuds back in the 80s and early 90s? And these have just disintegrated into nothing. So this has never been opened. What an amazing little thing. The E-A-H-Z-3-E Panasonic earbuds. <laughs> this must be our antenna adapter. Um, and yep, that's what that was. Oh man, here it is. Wow. So first off, there is a tiny... Yeah, we do have a little bit of damage here on the side. So that's not something that obviously we did. I don't see any plastic from that but we have to be very careful check it out right around that screw it looks like that plastic may just fall apart so I don't really want to do that oh here we go manufacturing date June of 1984 oh my goodness and we have some more cracked plastic down along this edge you can see on my right here that we have a speaker mono audio we have a way to do a channel call up here we can change the band for our signals. This used to be able to receive UHF and VHF analog video signals. On the top of the device we see Panasonic, we see Color, Travel Vision, ACDC 4-Way, and then we've got our antenna here to receive our signals. Climb on over to this side we have our DC input where we can input 12 volts. There's another piece of cracked plastic right next to that and over here so this does not have the best plastic and we have a tuning wheel where we could change our UHF and VHF and that is to actually turn the device on or off and turn the volume up and then we have screen controls here which are just change color, tint, brightness, contrast and vertical hold in case you have a scrolling problem and what I wanted to look at down here was this battery pack um, okay, so this is not thankfully filled with actual batteries. What you've got is a bay here that you could use uh, double A's and it would take eight double A's and you could slide this guy in here and it would be powered by eight double A batteries. Now down here is this really nice high quality kickstand so that you could kick that up and hold it like that. And then we've got, you know, like a, a wristband thing here. So you could, I guess, just hang it from your wrist and walk on down the street, you know, hanging out with, hey, what's going on? Here's my handy, awesome TV. And so it does look like we have the original OEM Panasonic AC power adapter because it puts out 12 volts DC. And hopefully this still functions properly. It looks like it's in really good condition. And we're going to go ahead now and plug the barrel in here turn that wheel and hopefully you can hear that speaker come oh and I see our little screen look at that let's turn out one of these lights and maybe we can see a little bit better yeah sorry for the strobing on there right now but we definitely are seeing some uh, image on the screen isn't that amazing now do you see that green line right there that's our tuning line so as I change that you know we're tuning through stuff and I don't think there's anything that should come up on this screen imagine if something did isn't that crazy but that's how you would tune through the signals and then if you switched over to VHF it would go red oh that's awesome so that's the way you could tell what band you were using is if it was red you're on the VHF setting and if you're on the UHF setting you're on green We've got the Super Nintendo right here, outputting composite video in our 240p test suite cart. We actually have on screen our 240p test suite down here. You can see the little uh, test screen suite there. How awesome is that? So all I had to do was plug in that adapter and it automatically sends the signal in. You don't have to press any inputs on the side. There's no input controls. It just senses it. I'll show you what that looks like. So if I turn that off, it's just a white screen. And then I turn the SNES on and it'll give me my little message there and pull up my 240p test suite. Uh, I think we should try to add this little attachment and see if that makes it uh, any better. Yeah, so that just slides right on there like that. Clicks into place. 
oh look we could actually maybe see something a little bit better wow so yeah that looks awesome inside that hood doesn't it wow so let's see if we could pull up man i can tell that says the color bars so you can see there wow that's actually pretty good resolution because you can see the three different bars down there in the lower right hand corner just barely and that's really how it should be set up this is going to be the monoscope grid let's see how this looks oh wow so that's um not bad actually right huh you see that a little bit better let me see if i can turn down yeah and the screen's not perfect but wow that's just something incredible to see um, again look at how small this is this is what the whole setup looks like and then i just zoom in here what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this over from our 240p test suite and we'll try to get something cool on the screen we're going to take a real close look at this screen now and zoom in on the picture and then we're going to drop the lights down too i mean this is almost playable right a one and a half inch screen that's incredible let's see how the sound works so that actually sounds pretty good and gets kind of loud there some of this mode 7 on a one and a half inch screen can almost read the Nintendo at the bottom Well, how about that? What a very cool device. I mean, 1984, it's really unbelievable to me that this is from 1984. I'm actually not going to take this apart because it does not have problems. It functions fine, but I don't want to cause more damage and not be able to get this thing back together properly because a lot of the damage is around these buttons and these wheels. And I'm afraid that just by opening it, um, and removing the shell I could do more damage there's a lot of little cracked places you see back here there's a crack and these are all around like screw holes too there's another crack right there that seems to be going in three or four directions possibly and I definitely don't want to not be able to get this thing back together now look, just because I don't want to open this and cause damage to the CRT doesn't mean you are not going to get to see inside of this lovely little CRT. Thankfully, the owner of this provided me with a huge file of a lot of photographs. So thankfully, due to Kevin, we'll be able to take a look at some photographs of the inside of this CRT and some other cool media that he's provided. All right, first off, we have a picture that we've already gone through a little bit, and that's of the box, which is just amazing again on this unit. Really cool to see that box and the TV itself. Now, if we look at our tube here and everything inside of it, there's some things we can go ahead and tell right away. First off, this is where the battery bay is. You can see the battery leads coming in here. And if we look up here, it actually says power supply right there. So this board we see is our power supply board. And then, of course, we have our tube here, serial number EH4366143. It's a Matsushita tube made in Japan. So, wow, look at that technology. Now, if we look, we can get a little bit of an aspect on how long this tube is by looking at the scales here on the side of this uh, mat that we can see in the picture where we get the inches, for example on this ESD mat. So this tube looks to be about six and a half inches, maybe seven inches in length. That's pretty long for something that's only one and a half inches across. You have to have that long tube to try to get that image to work and a lot of hardware in there, especially if you have a full setup here where you have three color guns in one tube that is only a one and a half inch screen. 
Then we have our deflection yoke right here, as well as our yoke rings for convergence right here. So that's all really cool. Looks like we've got some potentiometers on this side, possibly to make some kind of adjustment. And uh, then down here is like a tuner box for signals. Let's see what else we got. Another shot of that tube right there. And then you can tell the anode cap comes in here along the side of the tube. So it's not on the top. It's actually on the side right there. It's a little bit of a design that was common in the smaller CRTs. Another look at that tube. More looks at this, uh, these yoke rings here and how they've been epoxied into place. And we should be able to see, yeah, we could see some more capacitors down in here. And, oh, we can see a screen adjustment right here for G2 voltage, I'd imagine. That's back in this area. You could do screen and focus adjustments. There they are. Focus and screen adjustments right there. Wow. So look at the size of that in your hand. Just a wonderful little CRT. Uh, really cool tube design. Another closer look at that anode cap right there, right on the side. And it actually is touching this board here. And also this board is probably used to make some adjustments. Since Kevin was kind enough to send over this unit and these awesome photographs, I wanted to show you his channel. It's Supra Guy here on YouTube. So go check that out. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? <laughs> that screen is literally the size of a quarter. And it's sitting right on top of that SNES Mini. I like that. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Woo! I mean, this just is a great way for you to get a better visualization on what the actual size is like on this tube and this little setup. I mean, it is tiny. The size of a quarter? Goodness gracious. Oh, wow. So that is an awesome photograph. And I might have to just use these for, like, the thumbnail. I mean, look at that. I love that picture. Um, I might just have to get with my thumbnail guy and we just go ahead and roll with this one. I'm not entirely sure about that, but I, I really do like that one. Of course, this one's really cool also. Wow. So just an incredible piece of hardware. Now, what I do want to show you is some of these amazing screens right here. We can get really close with the photographs we've been provided. So these are just pictures of those calibration screens from the 240p test suite. And we're going to get in here and look at some other pictures that he sent. Check this out. You can see here we have a little bit of a red push, a little bit higher red. But look how far we can zoom in on this photograph. You can actually see where all the white, all the white really is, is a combination of every color right there. Look, you get red, green, and blue all hitting the mask of the shadow mask right there and the tube. And that's what's creating the white image so the closer we get the more we can just see how cool is that i mean you see the solid blue the green and then the red and then you can tell too down here like when you're looking at this text just look how crazy it looks like that's supposed to be the letter e in white wow amazing amazing photographs here um another one where you can zoom in and see how different these colors are you see, this is a white bar where we have all of them lit up at the same time. And then you can get the mixtures of colors by adding some blue and some green together, some red and some green together and all of it. And then when you back out, that's what the image actually looks like. So we're not going to have the opportunity with our naked eyeballs to get this close and get this kind of an image. And I can't believe these photographs. These are just fantastic. Another one of our color bars here so we can see you know that gradient change and pink for example how it's just a combination of a little bit of blue and red right there that's awesome now check this out if we get super close in here this looks like some kind of i mean this looks like some kind of cell activity and i mean by like cellular level perfection on um you know breaking down dna or something this looks crazy to me I mean, look at this photograph. This is white. It's supposed to be all white lines on the edge here. I believe it's supposed to be red. But wow, look how that looks when we get super close to that photograph. If we zoom back out, that's what it looks like on the screen. Unreal. Another one, another pattern. You can see the same kind of effect here. 
as we get closer. <laughs> Just looks so cool. And there we go. Now I'll zoom in here on Super Mario and you can kind of see some craziness in here. And that's what the real screen looks like. Like you zoom in. And again, it's just combinations of those phosphors being lit up. Anyway, thank you so much, Kevin, for these awesome photos. I just love them. All right, guys, this is a wonderful little color CRT set. And more than likely, this is the smallest color CRT television in the entire world. Now, finally, I want to say thank you big time to this video sponsor, Adobe. Please, again, do me that favor and go check out the article that's linked in the description of the video. And then there's a pinned comment below with the link there to this article. Also, I really think you're going to enjoy it. And I will see you all next time with some more retro content.